Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand forex and gold fundamental and technical analysis. If you're new or more, welcome to you. And if you are returning, an equally warm welcome to you. And don't forget to please like, subscribe and share. Press the like button and subscribe button if you find the content that I provide uh, every week uh, useful. And um, yeah, keep supporting the channel and gets this quality content out out to uh, the guys that really need it and unlike the vast majority of um, trading videos and analysis videos you might see out there from uh, youtubers um, I my approach is to combine fundamental analysis which I re-establish value via inflation interest rates business cycle monetary policy and combine that with technical analysis and employ supply and demand strategies like daily supply and demand zones with capture pain relief and stop hunts uh, and we use also technical analysis for risk management trade entry and profit targets so um, what we're going to do first before we get onto the fundamentals and technicals is just look at the week ahead and look at what's coming up with regards to any kind of news events and uh, market moving news events. And uh, from a Sunday on Sunday, we've got a um, uh, current account, which is always worth watching um, and unemployment rate for the uh, Swiss franc. So that current account was for the uh, Japanese yen. And that has an effect on GDP. Unemployment rate obviously has an effect on uh, GDP as well. So if you have high unemployment, it means you're probably going into a recession. Low unemployment means you're probably growing. So if you're trading any of those pairs, that's worth uh, watching on the Monday. And again, we've got GDP growth rate uh, final. Um, it's expected to you know come out pretty much as uh, as expected um, as far as the fourth quarter date and no surprises there Tuesday we've got some again GDP growth rate but it's more to do with the uh, the estimate the I think the um, the preliminary has come out as uh, minus 0 0.6 and when it comes to es estimates and finals then they're really not too far from the preliminary so again no surprises there unless um, there is a surprise obviously but um, it's pretty much a negative growth uh, for the uh, for the euro area and employment change. Um, from Australia, we have a consumer confidence change, which is seen by trading economics as quite an important um, uh, news data. So um, let's see if that does have any kind of effect on Australian dollar price. Uh, Wednesday, we've got core inflation for the. Uh, for the US, which is definitely going to be watched as, you know, high inflation, higher inflation would mean that the Fed have to potentially uh, high rates um, if they if, if inflation does move above their 2% target, which isn't really expected for at least another year or so. But it seems like the bond market is pricing that in a reflation trade, as, as it's called. And so inflation year on year is definitely going to be watched. You also have a uh, Bank of Canada interest rate decision. Um, it's expected to they're expected to hold. So again, anything other than that is a definite trade in my book because it would wrong foot the market. Um, Thursday we have uh, probably some I'm trying to see a press conference that would definitely be watched. The press conference um, and ECB rate decision uh, that's definitely going to be watched as well. It's expected anything out of the. Um, Unexpected. Anything that comes out unexpected is definitely to be traded um, because I think the market is pricing in. Obviously, um, the uh, the consensus is that there's going to be no change, and if there is a change, then um, the market has to be priced the value of the euro. Uh, that's really how to. If you are trading the news um, and looking for news trades, it's really trading the unexpected rather than the expected. Um, so and then we've got the press conference after that so that would definitely give forward guidance to the um uh, what the ecb are thinking regarding uh, inflation and monetary policy and then friday we've got industrial output um for the pound i guess the uh, for europe canada unemployment part-time uh, employment change so that's going to be important important for for uh, canada is is employment and then we've got uh, ppi month for month uh, 
Yeah, I think uh, budgets, but nothing really too market moving. I think the uh, the U.S. economy is going in the right direction, and I'll get into that as we uh, go into now the technical. So, looking at the Dow Jones Dollar Index, and the Dow Jones Dollar Index is just a measure of dollar strength against um, other currencies like the euro, the pound, um, the yen, um, and some others. Now. Technically, um, you know, we did see prices go through these supply zones. And I say this, you know, continuously, and I will continue to say this, is that there is no technical analysis level that will stand in the way of fundamentals and risk sentiment because technicals are just a level, uh, just, uh, uh, just again, just technical analysis, but the financial institutions, they make their decisions on whether they should buy or sell based off of liquidity, which is one uh, fundamental analysis, which is understanding and determining the value of a currency or an asset and obviously risk sentiment. So um, I was saying last week, fundamentally, that uh, I wanted to be a buyer and I've been saying it, matter of fact, for a long time. And, you know, traders will generally say, oh, yeah, yeah, right, right, right. But found a post, um, which is the 27th of January 2021, which is time stamped. And I said to the private members in our Discord group, I've been reading a few articles and it seems to be a bit of a shift between buying euros and selling dollars in the short term. It looks like Europe is lagging behind the US in terms of vaccine rollout. Therefore, projections for GDP will also lag. So for the short term, right, and the short term is one to three month period. Uh, I am looking to see if there are buying opportunities for the dollar as long as data supports my bias, which it has been since the uh, 27th of January. So the data to look for is growing GDP for dollar and lagging for the euro. The ECB are potentially being forced to do something about the unwanted strength of the euro. And then please go to our Eurozone channel, news channel for that, which means that they have to find a way to weaken the euro. The Fed has been winning the currency war over the past six months but it, that is now translating into potential growth for the US economy. So again, any positive GDP and inflation news supports uh, from the US supports a dollar buy bias for the short term, again, one to three month period. And I said that I would cover this in the evening call, which we have every Wednesday. So um, I was uh, looking at obviously the data just like everyone else and uh, again making my predictions which makes it easier on a price chart to then just look for buy trades which i was doing and again on friday supportive data um, us jobs growth surges past estimates unemployment dips to 6.2 percent so again that supports um uh economic growth which is why we were long dollar. And this was an article that I um, uh, was in last week's video um, on the 20th, published on the 25th of February, why the dollar is more robust than it looks. The US will probably grow faster than the rest of the developed world this year and relative rates uh, expectations will rise. Plus the EM trade is overcrowded. So we were as, um, uh, in, in our group anyway and I can speak for myself that I was long from the 27th of January which was right here this is where I was saying that I was long so then it's just a case of looking for confluences on the dollar Dow Jones dollar index and other dollar crosses to get long that's all I was doing I was ignoring supply zones because I understood that if the dollar is you know value right if it is a bargain down here and if i'm right about the trade then all i have to do is look for buy trades does that mean i win every single trade no but it, what it does mean is that when i do win i'm going to maximize my profits and hold on to the trade and i'm buying low and selling high that's exactly how trading works to to, to trade without understanding fundamentals and to really kind of call yourself a forex trader if you don't understand the fundamentals you're basically just a technical trader you're not a forex trader um you know 95 percent of these people who are on youtube um, are not forex traders they're just technical traders um so basically we understood where the value was and understood that supply zones do not 
account. Uh, we're not worried about supply zones in this sense. So with that being said, again, not financial advice. I'll just tell you what I'm doing um, and what I've done. Uh, I'm looking potentially at just demand zones. I'm gonna delete these. Delete that, delete that, or move that down there. These are where the demand zones are. So if you do want to be a buyer of the dollar, that doesn't mean the dollar is going to go sky high forever in a day. Of course, there's going to be pullbacks, but generally the path of least resistance should be to the upside for now, unless obviously something changes from a data perspective. Um, for me, that's my bias. If you do want to get short and uh, take advantage potentially of some profit taking and a bit of a pullback on the dollar, then you're looking at um, you know, sell trades not on the dollar current um, on the uh, DXY, but you'd be looking for um, uh, sell trades on other dollar crosses with this as confluence. So, again, you'd use the demand zone as confluence on your dollar cross pairs, you know, trade, or you'll be looking at sell trades as the dollar is in actually a nice uh, supply zone here. So, looking for any kind of trades on the dollar yen, dollar Swiss, dollar franc, um, dollar uh, CAD, for example. Anyways, let's move on to the dollar yen and dollar yen. Again, no supply zone that's going to stand in the way of fundamental analysis. So I would probably delete those as the dollar has been a nice buy against, um, especially against the um, safe haven currencies. So what we have here is some demand there. So really nice if you get in a pullback if we do get a pullback on the daily then it's looking for buy trades on a lower time frame to look for uh, at, at that demand zone um, if you are looking for any kind of short trades maybe there's some sort of risk off environment that comes in or sentiment or for example there's really disappointing news out about the dollar then it is a case of potential looking for some sell trades there if you want to take advantage of that but uh, for now, I think again the the path of least resistance is with the you know buying the dollar in at least the short term. So let's see what happens with that. Moving on to the dollar Swiss again. Look at that really really nice uh, trend to the upside. I was actually in this um, but exited, uh, took some profit and wanted to get back in, but didn't realize. Um, I say didn't realize, but I was anticipating a bit of a, a, a deeper pullback. Uh, but the pullback did not happen, unfortunately. Uh, so there is some supply here. There is some supply there and a bit here as well. So those are really the main areas to look for any kind of supply. If you're looking to buy the Swiss franc, that is um, decent area technically. But for me, again, looking for pullbacks, I think that's a really nice zone to look for any kind of... Um, any any trades in fact i think the top of this area here and uh, many uh, of the private members group will recognize this zone here as a uh, cpr zone so actually the top of that zone that 92 round number just below that actually is a nice um it's a different type of supply zone um or demand zone i should say and um and yeah so for the guys that i am uh, I'm privately mentoring that area there is actually really nice and I'll go over that setup in a in a in a private um in a in a in a private video. So let's just draw some of these demand zones and uh yeah for but from a daily demand zone perspective maybe a deeper pullback might come that's going to be the area to look for any kind of long trades and I think these areas are really nice for uh continued dollar strength dollar cad uh the cad has also been uh strong a bit strong as well commodity currencies generally do well in a risk uh, on environment so if you have two strong currencies what should happen is you should get a ranging market really um it's trends tend to happen when you have a strong versus a weak currency but when you have two uh strong or two weak currencies um, you get a ranging market. You can see what's pretty much happened uh, last week 
where the market really didn't move anywhere. As strong as the dollar is, you still have to choose it against the right pairs. You have to choose the right pair. Just because the dollar is strong doesn't mean it's going to be strong against every single currency. That doesn't make any sense. So, um, again, if you were in the uh, dollar CAD, probably didn't really see that much price movement. Um, but I do think, from a buying perspective, I do like this um, this demand zone here. Um, I think there's really nice, especially intraday, um, I think this is a really nice zone if prices can come down to this 125 for a buy. Um, if you're looking for any kind of sell trades, I think this level's been touched several times, so I don't think it's the greatest. I'd probably even say up to the 129s, um, 12950 would probably be the preferable area to look for any kind of sell trades, and that might not come within the next, you know, maybe couple of weeks, couple of months, who knows. So not really interested in trading this pair uh, fundamentally or, you know, technically there's no real technical setups in the in the short term uh new zealand dollar us dollar so we've again with some dollars with us dollar strength we've seen lower highs and lower lows so there is some um supply here and we're bouncing now off of an area that has some confluence of support and resistance and all support and resistance is is past supply and demand zones but um we've got some demand here plus an area of support you can see where there's probably been some profit taken again this pair isn't necessarily a favorite of mine or something that i'm focused on simply because you've got two uh, quite strong currencies but from a buying the dollar perspective i think the top area is a really nice zone this is obviously a nice zone as well as we made lower highs and lower lows this area here but the premium trade i think is going to be around the 74 round number between 74 and 7450 if i was looking for any kind of short trades uh that is really really um that's a really nice uh trade setup but if you think that the new zealand dollar is is, is a buy then i would probably say this probably the 70 round number would be the best area to look for any kind of long trades uh, although currently now is decent. Now looking to the pound, um, pound dollar, and the pound um, has been suffering just a little bit, but not as um, sentiment has kind of gone off the uh, the pound. I think the um, the vaccine trade, which has really driven price uh, this year. And even from last year, the vaccine rollout trade, which has pushed the pound higher, with um, and that's really um, that's had the expectation that the pound should want to uh, the uh, economy the economy should get back to normal quicker. Um, I think has leveled out a little bit, and I will go into uh, some some fundamental news. And it says, having stabilised in February, the UK economy seems certain to contract this quarter as lockdown continues to hit growth. But the va but the fast vaccine rollout could, uh, should spur recovery. Ar uh, argues Matthew Ryan, senior market analyst at UK fintech e, um, eBury and he basically breaks down why and he says investors are however focusing on the positives namely the UK's extraordinarily rapid vaccine rollout this has raised hopes of a return to near normalcy by mid 2021 and lifted the pound to the top of the G10 FX performance tracker so far this year it is for this reason that we think the UK economy could be set to outperform most of its European counterparts during the remainder of 2021 so um, again even in you know the short term if you're looking at short term plays the pound is probably you know a buy would it be a buy against the dollar again two strong currencies um, not necessarily the best um, uh, uh, pair to trade but um, there are um, I think for me I think this area here this 142 area is a really nice zone to look for any kind of short trades from a long trade perspective you do have a few options currently right now but with positive sentiment around the, the dollar um, why would you want to really kind of stand in the way of that even if prices do go to the upside it's not necessarily the smartest trade in the world to take and then you've got you know the next area down here which is um, which is a decent zone as well as we've basically led to new highs from um, this uh, 136 uh, 50 area down to the 136 so it's got a few confluences around there as well so um, pound dollar um, is is okay I think better from a short-term perspective and, and, and a shorting but um, yeah decent for a potential buy 
as well. Uh, moving on to the euro dollar, and the euro dollar is um, really selling off. And again, just understanding why you wouldn't want to be a buyer. There was, yes, there was demand zones here and there was a demand zone there, but why, why, why fundamentally would you be buying the, you know, the euro, um, understanding what's going on fundamentally with, you know, the dollar at the moment. And I know a lot of traders would have been getting involved in that nice pin bar. Personally, I ended up selling right around here. And uh, again, just for some proof, we did, um, I did create a video again for the private members group and the video was dated the 2nd of March and it was the Euro dollar 61.8% Fibonacci CPR setup where we were looking at short trades and in this video, this private members video, I do videos pretty much nearly every day, um, you know, going over some setups and uh, this was basically the setup to the short side and we were looking at this area here to get short. When I say this area here, what I mean is go down to a lower time frame we were looking at it was this area here right there for a short trade not going to go over the trade in this video because again that's for our private members um, but the trade worked out really really nice we got in what I got in around here and just added to the trade around here so again understanding uh, where we wanted to be sellers and uh, it's easier to then do your technical analysis just one way and look for these types of trades. And if you're right, this is where you can get those really lovely, you know, five, 10, 15 to one type trades. Now, going from a, going on to the fundamentals, uh, again, three days ago, Eurozone on track for double dip recession. COVID-19 lockdowns are dragging the Euro down, Eurozone into double dip recession, according to the latest survey of European companies. So um, again, not good news when you consider, you know, the divergence between um, the, uh, the the Europe and the, uh, and, and the US. And also as well, in this article where traders map out a uh, day when central banks finally raise rates. Um, there was an article, and I went over this last week, I went over the top bit anyway, I think it was around here, this first paragraph talking about rate hikes, but US on poll, Europe a non-starter, and this was from the 10th of February, with market-based measures of inflation rising, swap markets are slowly cranking up the pace of expected US rate hikes. Traders are bracing for a uh, first 25 basis point hike in the fourth quarter of 2023, then another 50 basis points over the next 18 months. That's a slower pace than the last hiking cycle suggests there is room for more to be priced in. That stands in contrast with Europe, where some central banks bankers continue to dangle the threat of rate cuts, right? So while one is one is dangling the the the, the threat, I guess not even a threat, but the uh, suggestion my market is pricing in a potential rate hike, and then you're seeing rate cuts. Again, a divergence in monetary policy. So not least as a means to counter strength in the Euro market pricing suggests that the first European Central Bank won't hike until 2024. So again, everything I was saying, uh, lagging, yeah? So the Euro, as I was saying, is lagging, yeah? Lagging for the Euro right there. Yeah, so it's not, it's not, I'm not a genius or nothing like that. It's just a case of understanding the um, the economics and seeing it play out in price. So um, going back to the Euro dollar, um, we were short around here, short around here, and you're seeing it really play out. Yeah, and that's pretty much what's happened. Going forward, um, again, there's no demand zone that's going to stand in the way of of of, of value and fundamentals um the uh, price doesn't move because of any kind of indicator it moves because of determined value and divergences in uh fundamentals so what we have now is really for me anyway some uh, some selling opportunities if we get a, you know decent pullback to the underside etc that's going to be a selling opportunity from a buying perspective because there are going to be buying opportunities of course uh, 
that would be the nearest demand zone in fact it's probably going to be all the way down here and then you've got another demand zone down here so there are going to be you know markets moving waves so you will get potential pullbacks um, and if you do want to take advantage of the pullback i would probably say look for price to kind of come down into this zone here before looking at any kind of uh, long trades but for me it's all about you know the path of least resistance which is you know buying the dollar as we have um, some strong sentiment and supportive data for that and until that changes my uh, my bias is to the is, is a euro dollar short looking at the euro yen euro yen again we've had um it's a bit of a supply zone not necessarily the strongest area of supply but i think potentially that's a decent buy um the the, the yen and the euro is a tough one to really kind of trade because we're in a we're in kind of risk on uh sentiment and i think um uh, the fundamentals on the euro yen aren't as clear and when they're not clear basically it's a case of you know stay out but from a technical analysis perspective this is a really nice zone to get look for long trades I would wait for prices if I wanted to get short I'd have to wait for prices to really kind of come down prove that there's some supply here and then look for any kind of short trades in the short term but fundamentally um, not really looking at that currency pair at all uh, looking forward to the Australian dollar US dollar and again I think overall the consensus is that the Australian dollar should um, I guess outperform the uh, the US dollar but in I think in the short term it's not a trade or a currency that I'm personally interested in uh, as there are a lot more easier trades out there and uh, the guys in the private group do know what they are now um, is there a buying opportunity here I would say so yep definitely within this zone of this uh, um, quite wide zone of, of demand but then we have uh, support and resistance zones within that to kind of break down where the uh, where you probably may want to look for buying opportunities if you think that the Australian dollar is a bargain against the US dollar now if you think the US dollar is a bargain against the Australian dollar then you're looking for pullbacks into that area there that 78 round number or up into this uh, 79 50 80 uh, cent area is where you'll be looking for any kind of uh, uh, short trades or to buy the US dollar and I think that actually I think we should want to enter into a ranging market so that actually might be a decent sell um, looking at the Australian dollar uh, Japanese yen and from a risk on perspective and I've been saying this for months we're in a risk on environment and this is what you see the Australian dollar which is a commodity currency will do well in a risk on environment right so risk on and the Japanese yen does not do well in a risk on environment it's a safe haven currency and strengthens when there's a lot of fear uncertainty and doubt so we've had a bit of a pullback nice buying opportunity here personally I prefer this 80 um, this 81 or 80 93 to 80 64 um, demand zone I don't think this has necessarily been the strongest area of demand just yet because it hasn't made higher highs um, actually made a little micro one but preferably I would want price to come back down to here before looking at getting long doesn't mean that there isn't an opportunity to get here there definitely is and uh, if that works out then brilliant if it doesn't then this is definitely going to be my zone to look for any kind of long trades I think that's going to be a nice bargain and even better is going to be here and as long as risk remains on and there is global growth commodities are you know um, commodity prices are going higher like oil copper iron ore etc then the Australian dollar really is the buy and finally gold and gold has not been doing too well um, and this is obviously due to um, dollar strength um, the reflation trade and um, and as well as like uh, bond yield and government bond yield so gold balls lose steam for now for now yeah as yields trump inflation bets so there is a an argument I guess that you know I say an argument but it's a fact that gold is a hedge against inflation so if inflation rises that should actually be bullish for gold but in the interim um, what investors are doing are 
they are putting them probably taking their money out of gold because gold doesn't return a yield whereas bonds do and bond is also considered a safe haven asset so if you were you know an investor would you put your money in a safe haven asset that returns a yield or a safe haven asset that doesn't and this is why investors you know are switching away from haven assets as yield rise and not necessarily switching away from bonds but they're probably getting into bonds but understanding that bonds pay a yield but what is supportive for um i guess gold bullion is that you know asian jewelry demand offers support so um, i think for the short term gold is going to have a tough time it's going to have a tough time um but doesn't mean that it's not a buy um doesn't mean that you should even you know short gold but there's always going to be buyers for gold so is there an opportunity at the moment um there's always going to be opportunities for me um i'm not really too keen on the gold trade at the moment especially with such strong sentiment around um the us you know a strong us dollar or stronger us dollar and um and bond yields rising you know 10-year bonds etc so gold i do expect it to kind of go into some sort of ranging market and when it does that's probably when i will start to potentially be a buyer but for now i think i'm going to um uh, not really look too hard at gold um, from a you know a, a buying or selling I need to really kind of see certain things fundamentally maybe pick up but again that doesn't mean in the short term that you won't get you know pullbacks so if you do want to trade gold um, and you do want to take advantage of potential dollar strength and gold weakness that's going to be the first area to look for any kind of sell trades and this is going to be the next area to look for any kind of sell trades if you're looking for a buying opportunity i would probably wait for there to be proof of value i think anywhere in this zone here in fact i think this zone here is actually quite a nice area it's got some confluence yeah it's got some confluence of a you know uh, a major um, support and resistance uh, where traders would be looking at so that's quite nice so you've got resistance resistance support 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 in this area so maybe the 16 where we are now probably down to maybe 1660 maybe actually a decent area to look for some buying opportunities um as maybe in a catalyst mate might be for some um wait for some maybe some dollar weakness and some uh some dollar um you know uh news to come out that isn't favorable for the dollar so um that's really i would say the play for me for now um if i'm looking to buy gold i'm never looking to to short gold unless really um things really start looking fantastic for the uh for the economy but with all the money printing that's been going on um i do think that gold is a buy it's just all about timing anyways guys um that brings us to the end of the analysis please don't forget to like subscribe and share uh, your comments are always welcome and i will try and get back to uh you know your, your questions as long as uh, they're worth getting back to and uh, i will see you in the next video take care and have a great trading week